everyone for um, tuning in to another episode of Conversations with Shan. Today I have with us Danielle Gathers, and um, I let me in, let her tell you about herself and how why I'm excited to introduce her. So Danielle, please tell us about yourself. Hi, my name is Danielle Gathers. Um, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and I'm the first Black woman president of MIT. Now. For those of you all who don't understand <laughs> how major this is, this, I mean, for tw it's 2020 and we're celebrating it first. So many people, I'll put the link on where it meant about MIT and what they, what the school means to everyone in the, in the conversation, in the, the description below. But tell me, like, what was your process in running? Yeah, so running for student government in the COVID-19 social distance quarantine world was definitely hard. Um, it was a lot of trying to leverage social media. Um, we made a website, we had an Instagram page, we had Facebook, oh. trying to add everyone we could. Um, our, we actually followed too many people on Instagram in one day, so they blocked us. Um, oh, God. And we were, like, reported as a spam account. Um, so that was definitely rough. It was a lot of Zooming different student groups, talking to student leaders, trying to get endorsements. So it was definitely a hectic two weeks. Um, but I think at the end of the day, Today, it's really about creating a really good platform that people can get behind. I'm just like, because I know with running for student body president, usually on site, having a table or on site hosting events and stuff like that. So it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> when COVID 19, you had to take it all online and virtual, it, it imposed another set of subset of problems, a subset of um, a hiccup in it. And it's like, you took that and maximized that. And you may, may need to consult with some of these other candidates <laughs> that are running for other office for them to understand how to um, campaign virtually. But so what was the feedback that you got from your um, from the other students? Yeah, I think the feedback we got was they, they felt like our campaign was very like people centered. It was less of like the typical um, like high depth we knew that COVID-19 would be happening like that's what most students care about right now you know so we didn't really want to focus too much on like campus reforms because who knows if we'll be on campus in the fall um and we heard that a lot when we were forming our platform so our platform was really focused on like you need to pick people who have values that are shared with you because that's who will be influ influencing the decisions moving forward so we got a lot of like people feeling like we were going to support them um, mm -hmm. and I think that was really important for us winning and that's the beautiful part of it, because even though you it's a student body, you're running for student body president, a lot of people need to understand that this should carry over into other things. <laughs> like, you should really align yourself with people who have the same values. But what inspired you to run for, um, for, the, for the president? Yeah, it was honestly kind of... I went to campus, like I went to MIT as a freshman, mm -hmm. knowing I wanted to like change things, be involved with the black community. I came from a predominantly white high school with the number of black students was really small. Um, so although we had tried to do our activism, it's hard when it's like 10 people. Um, so I was 10 people was 10 people strong though. <laughs> <laughs> so I was excited to go to MIT and hopefully have a more established base. Um, so I was really involved with the Black Student Union. Um, and then the co-chair of the Black Student Union at the time decided to run for vice president of student government. So he brought me on as the assistant officer on diversity. Um, so then I kind of got to see what student government was and kind of the impact you could have on the institute as a whole mm -hmm. um, versus in this individual community. Um, and then I realized that like people were coming to campus who wanted to be involved and didn't see student government as that way to have a big impact and right. it's affecting our diversity within our student government um so coming from that background and having that knowledge in terms of areas for improvement i was really like okay i see a potential for change and i think i know how to change i'm just like so impressed like you know you would awe someone like it's you set a plan you set a goal and you went for it and i love i love that and so any anybody who's coming up can see that they it, this can be done and you did it at a time where it's like it's virtually impossible you know so it's like i'm sorry it's one of it's like i'm not sorry i i'm so happy that we, we're experiencing and celebrating a first and i want to celebrate you because you took the you took the initiative you took the chance to be the first 
and that's the that was the 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 biggest i can't stop smiling because it's like high five um <laughs> so what are you studying i know you know i don't want to um regurgitate what i've read but i want you to tell me so what have what are you studying yeah i'm studying mechanical engineering with a concentration in product design i just wanted you to say that because <laughs> so a lot of like that is I'm, I have a son who um, is studying robotics. He's in high school, but he's very interested in it. But it's like, you're studying something that is a, a changer. It's going to be a changer, a game changer in the long run. So what are you, okay, are you doing any um, work with STEM programs, like speaking to those groups? Because I know, um, well, here we have a couple of, programs that are geared towards minorities um, and mit little boys of color, it's a STEM program and they do summer sessions and stuff like that. So are you mentoring those groups? Are you interested in that? Yeah, I actually founded my own program called Talent to 10 um, and it's to help increase the number of black female matriculation at MIT. So we had our first cohort this past year. We picked 10 black female juniors in high school from around the nation, and we paired them with black MIT students to mentor them through the admissions process. Um, so we actually got enough grant money to fly them up to MIT, but it was the weekend before like the big COVID outbreak, so we had to cancel it. Um, so right now we're moving the program virtual, but I'm still very excited to host them whenever we can. Um, and we're doing lots of webinars to coach them in terms of getting letters of recommendation, doing the MIT short answers and testing and stuff like that. So I actually do have a program where we mentor um, black females for STEM. I'm so excited because that's such a big, that, that sets a precedent. It is such a big add to increasing our presence in STEM programs. And I am so excited because that is so many females, especially black females are afraid to go into these fields that because they don't feel they have the support. So the, in regards to the black student presence, um, the student presence at um, MIT, um, has it increased since you've been there or has it just remained? Yeah, so I think in terms of like data, it's pretty much remained the same since like um, a couple decades, honestly, since the main big push to get black students in. Um, I think that black female matriculation has honestly, like, if not, like, stagnated, gone down a little bit. Because um, it's kind of like in terms of competition, as long as our um, fellow institutions kind of do more to seem like they have a black female co um, community and do more for black students, um, MIT kind of falls by the wayside. Um, but we're trying to catch up and hope. What is MIT? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, but it's MIT, like, who wouldn't want to go to MIT? Yeah, I think just in terms of you want to see people who look like you, who clearly have a community, who clearly have a strong organization. Um, and I think just in terms of, like, admissions and, um, like, showing mm -hmm. admitted students at MIT, it's very student-led. So just in terms of the culture at MIT and time for students, it's hard to create those events that showcase that versus other schools have, like, their institute offices doing a lot of like um, yeah being admitted students so i think that also gives us a disadvantage but i'm hoping it'll change hopefully being in this role will help um make mit seem like a place for black women and then also hopefully talented 10 can help with those numbers as well um i hope so and i know and i know that it'll make a difference because you know you you'll be providing a voice that in a, in a message that could be heard you know, on our, to us, you know, and it actually will make us feel comfortable and more inclined to, to consider MIT because the push for HBCUs now with the resurgence of that, it's like, you know, but going somewhere where you know you're going to get, you know, a greater range of education or a greater range of um, experiences should also be considered. Um, so I want to ask you, what are your top three things that you're keeping busy with now since, you know, we're quarantined and home? Yeah. <laughs> well, technically I work a nine to five. Um, I'm an intern at Procter & Gamble right now. Um, so I think I'm obligated to say that's my main um, time commitment. Um, and then <laughs> on top of that, um, being president is pretty mm -hmm. big. 
um, media is my third biggest thing now. But I think in terms of being president, we are tr- we are going to decide if MIT goes back in the fall mm-hmm. uh, by midsummer. So we're having lots of meetings on that. Um, Title IX regulations, trying to make sure we comply with those rules and do what's best for students. That's something else we're looking into. And then, of course, regarding race relations. Um, so we actually held an open council meeting the student government did last night or two nights ago. Um, we had 61 students attend, kind of starting that conversation on police brutality. What can we reform within our own communities to try to um, make things better? Um, so I'm excited for those ongoing conversations. And we're, yeah, we're just trying to ideate around that. We're actually doing a fundraiser right now. So we're looking to match donations and combine student groups. So it should be about more than $20,000 donated. And that's a, that's, right now, that is a, that is a great thing. That's amazing because of so many different, there's so many different groups out. And it's a great thing that you all, your student union can come together and, you know, talk about and have those hard conversations. Um, the consensus is, is uh, for me and my groups are, we have to do it. We have to talk about it, it, you know, and it may bring some people to tears, but you have to, you know, we have to broach it. So um, I think that's about it for today. Uh, but I'm excited because it's like, it's so refreshing and so um, I'm so happy to see another first be broken in my lifetime. So it's like this, I, where I live, we still, we still have first going on in our, our um, city council and our town and cur- hopefully Virginia will have its first black governor next year, crossing fingers. So it's like those things and I'm so happy that you have made history and have will change the way that we we will progress keep progressing in this country so um so tell everyone where they can find you on social media if you do have a so if you still have your social media presence because you're i was like i did some search i was like girl wait a minute now like so i mean do you have um instagram yeah my instagram is my first name danielle dot g underscore oh, okay because okay let me see. So I'll make sure everybody follows, follows suit, follows you. <laughs> and because um, I realized that, um, let me see. You said Danielle dot. Okay. I'll look it up in a second. I want to go ahead and get it done. So also, is there any way for them to go to the MIT website to find out more about you? Or do you have a Facebook page for that? Um, well, so we have a student government page. Um, so if you look up UAMIT, you should be able to find the student government page. And then we have my bio there. Um, I also have a Facebook. It's my first and last name. It is so easy. That, that, that just works. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me this morning. Um, I will definitely, I'll send um, questions because a lot of, I'm getting a lot of questions like, what do, they, what do you mean in a hundred, you know, plus years, how did they get, how did they not have one? So I'm getting that question a lot. And I'm, you know, it's, it's a change of the guard, pretty much what is, what's, what's coming into play now. So I really appreciate you talking to me today and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too.